Whether you dive soft weights or hard weights, they are a crucial part to your total dive system, and they're going to help you counterbalance the positive buoyancy or the natural positive buoyancy you have as a diver and the positive buoyancy of your equipment as well. But how do you know which weight system is going to be right for you? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now as the teaser stated, we're going to be looking at different weight systems today. I'm going to be talking about some of the pros and cons to each and hopefully this video will help you out when you're trying to determine what type of weight system for your total dive system is going to be best for you. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video and let's see some of the different weight systems you can actually get. So the first two that we're going to look at, of course, are the two standard types of weights. Whether it's a soft weight, typically it's going to be, say, a mesh or a neoprene pouch that's got steel shot. Sometimes you can get lead shot in it as well. And then, of course, hard weights. Hard weights are typically going to be a lace-through design. There's several different ones. Sometimes they've got a little slit in here that makes it sliding it on and off a belt a little bit easier. But also the hard weights will also come with a vinyl coating as well. So you can get the non-coated or the vinyl coated. Me personally, I actually like the vinyl coating. We're going to look at the hard weights real quick and see just how easy it is to use. All you do is take a standard nylon webbing weight belt, you thread it through, you put whatever denomination of weights you need, you slide it around the belt to get it uh, evenly distributed, and you're good to go. Now one of the benefits to the hard weights over a soft weight is you can also use it with standard weight pouches as well. So here I've got the SLS system for Mares. All I've got to do is just unzip it and I can use the hard weight very easily. Now the soft weights, which are typically once again either steel shot or lead shot, they too can be used in the pouches for say a BCD if it's an integrated system. However, they typically will not be able to be threaded onto a belt unless you have a belt that has pouches built in. So here we've got a standard weight belt. It's got neoprene pouches that are spread evenly across it. And of course I can use hard or soft weights on it too. Now sometimes you're going to see hard weights that actually has these little clips on it, very similar to this clip here. And those are designed just for quick attachment. Maybe you need to clip off to a D-ring or something like that. A lot of times instructors who teach open water programs will use these because they can clip off to a student real quick if they need to, especially in a pool setting when you're trying to determine how much weight you need. It makes it very easy just to clip off to a D-ring and go. But there is another type of weight system that we can look at, say, if you dive, say, a backplate and wing. One of the problems with a backplate and wing is when you wear a standard weight belt with it, you have to put that weight belt on typically before you put your back plate and wing on just so that you can make sure everything fits properly. The problem with that is, is when you go to ditch your weights, now your weight belt's going to get stuck with your crotch strap. So divers who choose to dive a back plate and wing with a weight belt, a lot of times they will put it on after the fact. But since you've got a crotch strap, depending on how you have your system adjusted, you may not be able to get that weight belt directly across the fulcrum point, which is where you need it to help stay trim. So a lot of times with back plate and wings, divers will get a system like this or like this. Now the cool thing about these systems here is they'll actually thread directly onto a waist strap which is typically where your fulcrum point is going to be anyways and then of course if you've got a system like this you can add a weight pouch to it or a system like this where it just simply threads to your strap. It's just got a little velcro pouch that you simply pull up pull down, and of course your weights can pop out during an emergency. But there's also another system that we're going to look at that a lot of backplate and wing divers, especially dry suit divers, will consider, and ones that I've used in the past for both public safety diving and ice diving as well. And of course that is the weight harness. Now the weight harness was a very unique design in the fact that not only did it evenly distribute weights across your body and they were ditchable as well, but it had a dual purpose. One, it kept all the weight that typically would be pulling down here on your hips, it distributed that weight when you're on land across your shoulders, your upper torso, and your hips as well. Plus it doubled as an additional harness if you needed, say, a tethering harness. Now like I said, a lot of times in public safety diving or even in ice diving, I will be tethered off. That means I've got a tendered line that's connected to me and goes to the surface. With this particular system, I used to thread on a D-ring to one shoulder strap, and that way they could actually clip to the harness. A lot of people would say, why wouldn't you just clip to your BCD? 
BCD. Well, if I was in that situation where I needed to ditch the BCD, but I still wanted to be tethered to the surface, by having it on the harness itself it would actually work fine. Now, the cool thing about the weight harness itself is it was also ditchable. So the Velcro pouches here on the side is where you actually put your weights, and then in the emergency situation, all you had to do was pull out on the rip cords, and the weight pouches themselves would actually fall off. Now, if you're familiar with the Ziegle rip cord system from their weight system, this one basically worked the exact same. Now, we had a video in the past showing you how to re-thread that rip cord system. I'll actually link it right up here for you, and that way, if you got any questions, you can just watch that video, and you would thread this system the exact same way. Now, one of the downsides to the harness system is it can get in the way of certain BCDs. So imagine for a second if you've got a jacket-style BCD, and you've got a large pocket here on the side. That large pocket is actually going to get in the way of these weight pouches if you just needed to change some weights, and it could actually be positioned in the wrong place for you. So typically with a dry suit where you're wearing just a little bit extra lead, then of course a backplate wing is going to really come in handy there. You just got to make sure you know exactly which harness that you're trying to adjust if you need to. But the weight harness was a great system, especially for those that are wearing extremely thick suits or even a dry suit itself where you had to be slightly overweighted as well. So that being said, let's really talk about how we know that we're properly weighted and how we're going to know which system here is going to work best for you. So as far as your personal weighting needs, we've made a video for you guys to help calculate exactly how much weight you need. Now I'll say exactly, in all honesty, that video is nothing more than a starting point for you. Once you do the math and you do the calculation, and this is of course without an exposure suit, you need to go to a swimming pool and practice. And when you practice, you want your tank to be anywhere say between 500 and 1000 PSI. By doing so, we're actually taking the buoyancy characteristics of the air itself inside the cylinder away from that scenario. So you're not going to have to redo the calculations over and over and over, and you're not going to have to try to compensate for the loss of weight as you breathe up your air. So if you start with around 500 to 1000 PSI, which is where you should be during your safety stop anyways, it's going to eliminate a lot of the problems that you may have once you get properly weighted, and then of course you go diving and use up your air. But make sure you watch that video. If you got any questions on that video, please ask me down in the comment section below, and I'll try to help you out with the math the best I can. But now the last thing that I want to talk about is even once you are properly weighted without an exposure system, then you want to do it with an exposure system. And there are some rules of thumb that we typically follow for that. Typically for neoprene products, whether they're compressible or not, you're going to add two pounds per millimeter of thickness. So for example, if you're in a three mil, you can typically take two times three, that's gonna give you a total of six pounds. And the average diver is gonna wear around six pounds, say in fresh water with that three mil. Now, once again, this is not exact. This is gonna be different for everybody because everybody's weighting needs are different. And the variable of the neoprene itself is gonna be different based off the manufacturer's material that they're using. But it will be a good starting point. And I can't stress this enough, guys, you gotta get out there and you got to train and you've got to practice. Whether you dive a weight integrated system or a non-ditchable balanced rig system, whether you dive a weight belt or you dive a weight harness, whether you dive aluminum tanks or steel tanks, you can make the weighting work for you. One of the last tips I give open water students just prior to their certification is never ever let the equipment manipulate you. You learn to manipulate the equipment. Whether you're trying to deal with weighting needs or you're trying to learn how to deal with proper trim. We do have a video coming out in the very near future and we're going to be talking about trim in a dry suit and I'm going to be talking about some of the myths that dry suit instructors tell their students about fins and why you're supposed to have certain fins in a dry suit and hopefully that video is going to be very educational and very interesting to you as well because we're going to talk about body manipulation versus buying gear that takes the skill set actually away from you. But stay tuned for that video. But guys if you like this video on weight systems, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you got any question on weighting needs, drop it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.